루살렘에는 최첨단 기술을 사용한 박물관이 있는데요. 여기서는 잘 알려지지 않은 현대 이스라엘의 이야기를 전해주고 있다고 합니다. 이스라엘에서 전해온 소식입니다. The museum greets visitors with a profound introduction, stunning aerials of Israel, while a map traces the land given by God to the 12 tribes, all set to originally scored music. The museum uses state-of-the-art technology. For example, this area is one of the largest touch panel exhibits anywhere in the world. Touch one of these panels, and you can find out more information about Christian Zionists throughout history. The modern features like video mapping aim to tell new audiences one of the most compelling and often unknown stories about modern Israel, the role of Christian Zionism. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu addressed this history in a 2012 speech. I don't believe that the Jewish state and modern Zionism would have been possible without Christian Zionism. I think that uh, the many Christian supporters of the rebirth of the Jewish state and the ingathering of the Jewish people in the 19th century made possible the rise of Jewish Zionism. American Mike Evans built the museum to spread the word of Christian Zionism's place in history. Wanting a home for Christians to celebrate their heroes and their history. I found no place in Israel where Bible-believing Christians can go to, and they have heroes and they have history. The museum is based on years of research and this two-volume set written by Evans. There's so many of them. I mean, if you just take George Bush, 1844, this guy was a Hebrew professor, and he wrote a book that sold a million copies on the restoration of Israel. And yes, his two relatives were U.S. presidents. Others like Ord Wingate formed the first Jewish fighting unit in nearly 2,000 years, the beginning of the Israeli modern army we see today. Women like Corrie ten Boom and her family. The Nazis killed her father and sister, and she suffered in a concentration camp because they hid Jews during the Holocaust. And Swedish diplomat Raoul Wallenberg faced death to save Jews. In the dead of winter, Wallenberg joined the thousands of Jewish prisoners in the death marches to Auschwitz, trying to save anyone he could. What was it that to face death, I realized, number one, it was their Bible. They had an intimate relationship with the living Lord, and they loved the Word of God, and they were willing to commit their life for it. And with the Word of God came promises to the Jewish people. Those scriptural promises are woven through the exhibits, from Ezekiel to Isaiah to Abraham. According to the ancient writings, one day, God appeared to Abram and spoke the words that would give birth to the nation of Israel. For visitors, the experience is wow. It's an experience like, like no other. I mean, you go in there and it's, it's interactive. You'll learn a lot of things that you probably never even learned. I thought this was a, one of the most impressive things I have seen in Israel in the time that I've been here. Many never knew the history and now want to tell others. I am going to tell everyone that I can think of, people in my synagogue, to come here to see how this beautiful land of Israel was not built just by the Jews, but by the Christians and the wonderful people who risked their lives to make us a homeland. For Evans, the museum lets the Jewish people know that although enemies surround Israel, they're not alone. They see Auschwitz, and what they went through, and they see the alienation in the world today, and they come through it, and they say, we're not alone. There's Christians who really love us. And it's, it's just amazing to see that. It gives me hope I'm not alone. That's enough. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem.